Hi guys, I just want to share with you something that um, <laughs> I seen someone on Facebook and they made like a passing comment. They said something like the animals don't even work on a Saturday. And I was like, whoa, because first of all, I know there's a connection between God and the animals. Not that they're all instinctive and know what they're doing kind of thing and sort of God guides them. Not the fact that God brought the animals to the ark, you know, to get on the ark before the flood. Uh, but more prophecy. So when the inheritance event, I say when the inheritance event happens, how it's all going to be complete, you know, when Jesus Christ gets to the throne, when Israel says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and when Jesus gets to the throne, when the celebration in the heavens happened, the third celebration is on earth, and it says all the creatures which are in the heavens, the birds, on earth, the horses, the sheep, under the earth, the rabbits, the foxes, and such like that are in the sea, the fishes, all gonna, all I heard singing, blessing and honour and glory and power be unto him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And then the four beasts in heaven said, Amen. So there's that direct connection there and a confirmation as well. Imagine that all the animals are going to erupt into song at the very same time at the inheritance event. I mean, come on now, even in the last 10, and thing is prophecy will be prophecy, like prophecy is happening now with Israel and it's in your face. It's in your face. Now, I don't particularly think this will be on, well, it possibly would be on the mainstream media when all the animals erupt into song like that. Um, but they'll, they'll have an explanation. It definitely won't be God. It definitely won't be, hey, the inheritance event, Jesus is coming back to inherit the earth, repent. It's not going to be that from the mainstream media. They'll have scientists come on. They'll probably say, oh, it's all climate change. The animal, something happened to the earth or there was a gamma ray burst and that made all the animals erupt into song at the same time they'll, they'll have some answer because that's what scientists do they make up answers for things they don't know anything about they tell you how what's in the earth in the center of the earth how hot it is what it's made up of and no no one's even been there to the center of the earth i don't even i don't even believe there is a center of the earth do you know what i mean anyway so there's a direct connection that I know and believe of because, like I say, I've been preaching about this stuff. I've been preaching when you hear all the animals erupt into song. So I know there's a direct connection between God and the animals. But then, anyway, this passing comment someone made that, hey, the animals don't work Saturday either. I was like, Phew. I was like, yeah. But I tell you what, I was like, I would really accept that if that was true. If that was true. But with me, you know, I don't just accept something that I hello <laughs> hello you come here then you boo ta 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 you thought you were going to have a nice quiet Sunday morning I thought I was going to make a video but now you distracted me and flew, flew me off my kilter <laughs> <laughs> there you go it was, it was about animals actually was it? <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> What, brown furry ones that cause trouble? No, no, but someone making a passing comment about like um, animals don't work, like work, you know, um, animals that have got jobs. Yeah. Like bees and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, beavers and that don't work on like at work on a Saturday, you know, because it's a Sabbath day. Yeah. And, um, well, I just wanted to prove that, like, but apparently someone's proved it, yeah. What's that? They don't work on a Saturday. <laughs> Do they not? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Well, unless these people are barefaced liars, like. Oh, okay. So there you go. Well, I see bees buzzing around in the garden on the Saturday. Yeah, you see them buzzing around, like, or eating or whatever. It's just the working bit, I think. Uh, you know, like, pollinating and... Every day off, do they? I don't know. I mean, like I said, I've found two sources that one guy who stu studied um, beavers... Right. ...for... It was something like 16 years because they moved in and there was this yeah, lake yeah, yeah. and he's so he's seen them and then he, he said well I, I just noticed that 
suddenly they, um, they, they, they he just suddenly not realised that they just he didn't see him on a Saturday. So he goes there every Saturday to see them working or milling about, and he says they just don't come out on Saturdays. <laughs> I know they're alive because I can hear them. I can hear them inside the lodge here. Listen to this. <laughs> I guess these guys need a day off too. But why did they pick Saturday? Do they even know it's Saturday? Or maybe it's just a coincidence. The only way to find out is to, is to keep on observing through another week. They've obviously come back out of the lodge. They look healthy. So I'll just keep watching and see what's on their schedule for this week. Another week of observation. And the beavers were out every day, busy as usual. Sunday through Friday at about the same time every day. And then, came Saturday. And just like the first week, all was quiet again. This continued on week after week, month after month, summer and winter, with the same results. My dad has been watching these beavers for about um, 16 years. He's been getting to be kind of an expert on beaver behavior, at least with this family of beavers. They seem like normal animals, except we've never once seen them out on Saturdays. Notice something interesting about beavers. You see how close their front arms and shoulders are? It's far as hard to believe, but it's one of them things that you wouldn't really realize, would you? I'm going to try and prove it myself maybe next year, you know, with the bees and the pollinating and all that. Yeah. Would have been, would have been handy to learn this sort of for the beginning of the it year. It would have been useful in like March, wouldn't it, really? Yeah, because I had like tons of tomato plants this year. and. Uh, yeah, we did too, didn't we? And when during one of them he spoke about the Sabbath instinct idea, one of those Brazilian pastors told him that he knew a certain beekeeper from the Amazon rainforest whose bees never worked on Sabbath. When Dr. Lee heard that news he got very excited because although he had suspected that there could be some still existing species that managed to preserve the Sabbath instinct yet he never found any proof for that. So, he was exceedingly happy and grateful to God that his assumption was now proved to be correct. Together with that pastor they got into a car and drove to the center of the Amazon rainforest to see that fascinating phenomenon. When Dr. Lee arrived there it was still Sabbath so he wanted to see with his own eyes that the bees were really resting. And sure enough, although there were many hives in that apiary, there were no bees seen around in the field. He was very excited about it and wanted to learn as much as possible, so he told the pastor to ask the beekeeper to open one of the beehives so that he could see if the bees were there. Then Dr. Lee asked that man when the bees stop working and start their Sabbath rest. The answer he received made him even more thrilled as the beekeeper answered that the bees always stop working exactly at the sunset every Friday. It was so amazing. 
Bees keeping the fourth commandment and resting on every Sabbath beginning from the sunset on Friday, exactly as the Lord commanded in His Word, Leviticus 23:32, Genesis 1:5-14, Mark 1:32, Matthew 28:1. Through that opening, Dr. Lee could now see thousands of bees resting in the hive, and in spite of the disturbing noise and damage, they kept on staying there. Only a few of them came outside but returned after a very short time. It was such an incredible experience to see the bees remaining in hives throughout the entire Sabbath, although there were so many flowers outside and so much work they normally love to do. Dr. Lee was also told that if someone wanted to move these hives, it could be done only after sunset on Friday, as otherwise, it would cause a big problem. The next day, on Sunday, Dr. Lee visited that place again in order to check if the bees were working this time. And he wasn't disappointed as all the same insects were very busy in the field collecting pollen and working very hard all Later the time. On, when Dr. Lee came back to the place where he was teaching the same group of Brazilian pastors, one of them remembered that when he was a child often after attending the church on Sabbath his father took him for a walk and showed him Sabbath-keeping birds. Every day the birds were very busy building and rebuilding their nests, but on Sabbath, they never worked. Below I have also included a link to a very interesting video about beavers that seem to keep the fourth commandment by resting on every Sabbath. Obviously, as sincere Bible students and believers, we don't need any extra evidence to support the validity of the Sabbath commandment because the authority of the Word of God is more than enough for us. However, it is so exciting to know about the existence of some animal species that seem to be a living proof that Sabbath rest instinct really exists and therefore it had to be encoded in the beginning in all living creatures including us. However, the fact that some animals still seem to rest on Sabbath shouldn't surprise us so much because as a matter of fact, the fourth biblical commandment embraces not only men but also animals, remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your animals, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, Exodus 28-11. So you can do what you want with that information really. You can call them both a liar, which of course then you'll be guilty of false accusation if they're not lying. Or maybe you just need to look at yourself and maybe you'll be like, I'm in denial. You know, how can the Sabbath be from Friday sundown until Saturday sundown? And that even the animals don't work. And this proves to the world that Saturday is the Sabbath, not Sunday. I don't need any uh, confirmation myself because you know, back in the day, I agreed to work Saturday in a football club uh, during the matches on a Saturday. And... God came to me a week after I'd agreed to work the Saturday and he rebuked me in the dream. I was there holding a baby in my arms, cradling. There was a ticker, which was the Ten Commandments running across it. And I heard an audible voice saying, keep all my commandments. Proper, big, bellowing type voice as well. And um, I woke up and I realized then, oh, after I realized, I was like, oh, I've agreed to work Saturday. And um I repented obviously and went in and told them I can't work Saturday and they said okay well it wasn't mandatory anyway so so I don't need any confirmation but maybe some people I hope do. you got all that anyway about uh, the, the animals not working on the Sabbath day Saturday so you know we had this guy who was living with the beavers he, was li he, he literally moved to a, a, a place where there were beavers active in the, in the lake and um, he studied them for many years and then he just suddenly noticed so it dawned on him that there wasn't much activity on a Saturday 
and he confirmed that he goes there and the beavers are not working as in labor work so making dams on a saturday and then you have this other person example he says that he went to investigate these this guy who specifically said these bees stop working on a saturday but more specifically um, he says that they stop work on friday night so friday evening As the sun goes down through the night, he monitored them and through Saturday daytime, they were inactive. They weren't working and doing the jobs that they need to be doing like uh, pollination. So they're the two sources that I managed to find, two witnesses, if you like. I mean, so, if, you know, if, if they're lying, then they're lying. Then they're going to the lake of fire anyway. I thought I'd just report this as a very interesting thing. Like I mentioned, we know that the animals are all going to sing in celebration all at the same time. All the creatures which are in the heavens, the earth, under the earth, and such like that are in the sea are all going to start singing blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. That's when the inheritance event happens, and it hasn't happened yet. Uh, what are we on? The 23rd of October, and still the inheritance event hasn't happened. Jesus Christ hasn't been delivered, delivered to the throne to take the scroll with the seven seals, and the seven seals haven't happened yet because the Antichrist has not been crowned King William V. Which, by the way, William V recalculated in symbols, that's all language is anyway, it says, I am VI, 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 666. I am 666. And um, so, yeah, I mean, these, these two witnesses have said it. But what I'd like to do, obviously, it's the wrong time of the year now. So if we're here, I mean, uh, like next year, I mean, depending on what, whatever happens, I mean, if the seals happen now and the throne comes down and passes over and the rapture and the great multitude and the 144,000 are sealed on their foreheads in, in the mountains, we're going to be laying low while the trumpet judgments happen anyway. Well Well, not laying low, but just staying still and let God's trumpet judgments, just, you know, judge the earth. Uh, one of them being nu nuclear war. So, I mean, we can see the birth pains of this happening. I, I, I was quite amazing. I said years ago, I mean, like nearly 10 years ago, I said the alliance would be like, I said the, the alliance would be Iran, Russia, China and North Korea. The four angels that go out to the four countries alliance and muster up an army of 200 million. All armed with tanks and truck mounted nuclear warheads. So. You know, we're in, we're in the time now of the birth pains of the trumpets happening. You know, nuclear war, I mean, it can build up to, but then stop. So, but if we see the other trumpet judgments, you know, like, um, well, La Palma, La Palma will be, La Palma will be very quick. La Palma volcano brewing up, trumpet number two.
um, then maybe a space rock or a meteorite or a comet that they might call might call wormwood. coming down at the same time um, so yeah and Yellowstone as well the bottomless pit opening if the, if the readings start going up maybe again when they're not supposed to when it's unnatural then that'll be another birth pain So, uh, yeah, just keep watch on that one. But, yeah, I, anyway, so even if the throne passes now until next year or whether it be any other year later on, I don't. we don't really know until it, it begins. I'd really like to prove this for, to myself to be true or false. I'd love to, I could, I could do quite do it easily. I could set up CCTV cameras and record it. Um with a proper date and time something that i know and i could i could monitor the bees pollinating the flowers of like the tomato plants like i say i wish i heard about this in springtime i would have proved it this year i would have proved it this year but now it's hardly any chance to prove it with the bees and i just don't know where there's any beavers i mean they're literally I think they maybe on the endangered list, I'm not sure, but there was a massive culling of beavers, people killing them, and now there's people trying to save the beavers. I love them, man. I love beavers. I think, I even think like a beaver myself. The other day, I was thinking like a beaver myself. I was thinking after the throne passes, well, what's the most important thing in the world? Physical thing for us, for life, for river of life, it's water. We need water. We don't need anything else. We don't need food, but we need that water, yeah? And so I, I was even thinking like a bee for this because we had massive rushes of water coming down. And I was thinking, ooh, that'd be nice if we channeled all that piece of land out and made the water flow in to catch the water and reservoirs there and there, you know, up, up where I live now on the Conway Mountain. It'd be interesting to make a, a a reserve for water there, a reserve for water there. I was kind of thinking like a beaver, I'd like dam it off a little bit or divert it a little bit. So I think I think beavers are amazing. You know, they kill them all waters on my land. Yet the farmers were crying into their soup, yeah, in 2018 when they didn't have any water to feed their crops. Wouldn't it have been amazing if they left the, the beavers and there would be more standing water, wa more waterways, uh, you know, Beavers are like a salvation to us, actually. They're there to save our life. They're there to keep water in, not have it run down into the sea. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I was kind of thinking like a beaver the other day and thinking, well, how could we divert, divert the water? How could we make waterways? Because we need that water, man. And after the throne passes, it, definitely for America. Because when the, when the Mississippi splits up, guess what? All the Great Lakes are coming down, Mississippi, it'll all just piss out and that'll be it. It'll, the whole east, like, east, uh, well, west of Appalachians, all that, Mississippi, Missouri and all that up to the up to them plains there, it'll, it'll gradually just dry out, it just dry out. It'll just run out into the sea. So, I mean, that is a blessing to them. They're Great Lakes and the Mississippi River and everything else. But they've taken the piss. They've, they've, they've now become abomination to God, uh, waving their pride, six color Satan flags all across the, every state of the United States. So now comes the judgment. He can put up with you not keeping the Sabbath for 1,500 years. I mean, the the false religion, the false Babylonian sun worshiping Christianity religion was done, dusted, sealed in Europe 
way before America was a country. America was built on a religion that was already made for them. Do you know what I mean? Um, the fake Christianity, which was created like, for, it's, it really started rolling like about 300 years after Jesus Christ. So, but they, but now the abomination, I think, I think that was a catalyst. I think God saying, yeah, I can put over you not keeping my commandments, but to commit abominations and all the nations joined in under Satan, Barack Obama, lightning from the heights. They all joined in. India even. Oh yeah, it's all right to be gay. Let's marry you. You know what I mean? And so they all, they all joined in. And um, I think, I think, uh, I think it was Satan was using this thinking Sodom was burnt to a crisp. Uh, now, if I can make all these nations, which I need gone, all into Sodom, then God will do the destroying. So I don't really, it takes a bit of a load off, if you like. Yes, he wants to destroy, mass destroy people. They, they plan to have a population of the world of 0 0.5 billion, yeah? I mean, it's 7.5 billion. It's probably nearly touching 8 billion now. So they want 7 to 7.5 seven billion people. Call it 7 to be sure. They want 7 billion people gone off the face of the earth. However way. And I think Satan creating a country that would antagonize God to bring his wrath upon that country... was just him, you know, I need a bit of help here, I'll turn these into Sodom and Gomorrah so that God's wrath will come upon the nations. And the nations allowed it, and it happened. Not so much the people, a lot of people stand up against these things that are ungodly, but they don't get hurt, the governments themselves. But, you know, the government, the royal family, the Illuminati, they don't care about countries and flags. They just care about the cause. And the cause now is to rule the world from Israel with the Antichrist William as being king of the world from Israel. From Jerusalem, from the Temple Mount. So, um, yeah, destruction and annihilation come into them na nations that have become like Sodom and Gomorrah. But it also says that it's not going to stop. It also says that Jerusalem will also become Sodom and Gomorrah and Egypt. So homosexuality, transgenderism is Egypt. And so, yeah. But anyway, yeah, just keep watch about this um, animal thing. Um, where the, <clears throat> if someone can prove it, if someone's got a study that they know of where animals stop working on a Saturday, then um, if you think about it, just share these two witnesses who have um, published this. And if they turn out to be liars, then hey, they turn out to be liars. I'd love to prove it to myself. Maybe next, well, maybe next year. See how the land lies. Um, I will prove it to myself if 
this, like I say, even if the throne does pass, I mean, I'll probably prove it to myself anyway. I'll probably set up some cameras on my tomato patch and uh, monitor it and then see if it is true about the, the bees not working on the Sabbath. I can well believe it because here's the point is that I see the connection between God and animals in the inheritance event. I've seen it for like nearly 10 years now. I've been preaching about it for nearly 10 years now. So I see the connection between animals and God because they'll celebrate to God. So them not working on a Saturday, I was trying to have a conversation with that guy and he was like, well, how do you know Saturday, Saturday? And I'm like, oh, maybe we can go again. I, I just, call, I'll just call it day seven then if you want, mate. Do you know what I mean? You get the stupid things that, you know, just there's no common sense. How do you know Saturday, Saturday? How do you know the grass is called green? Do you know what I mean? Because that's our language. Sab Sabbath day, Saturday actually means Sabbath day, just in different languages. And the translations come around as Saturday. You know, it's got nothing to do with the planet Saturn or anything like that, even. That, that actually come way later. So So, so yeah, just uh, I thought I'd share that with you. God bless you all. I've been Pastor Prophet Justin Roberts from End of the Age Bible Prophecy. God bless you all. Amen.